what's up freaksters so we're here at the historic lakeside inn in mount dora florida so uh if you guys don't know what that is it's a it's a old little town that um it's actually got a lot of kind of hauntings and ghost stuff going on apparently this hotel was um established in 1883 and apparently al capone used to stay here uh, hopefully there wasn't like a hit in the room that we're staying in because that would be pretty crazy. Blood on the ceiling. Uh, blood on the ceiling. Yeah, here's my uh, mom drinking a beer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, this is a cool little room we got. So, so tell me, tell me about this. What, what's out there? It's an outhouse. So if your toilet's not working tonight, you can just go around the corner and. Oh my see God! The with a little, little moon. moon on it. That's so weird. So somebody pooped in there. <laughs> Yeah, at one time, at one time <laughs> they did. So later we're going to do a ghost tour and um, they're going to actually walk us, I guess, through this hotel and then some of the other areas because oh. apparently this hotel is haunted. Really? I mean, that's what I just said. Yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, so. That's why there's so many bolts on the door. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then there's another thing. This, the door, it's weird. Like when we got here, we just couldn't open it. It was like, you'll unlock it. And then this one is, yeah, it's, it's I don't know that we're going to get out. <laughs> I've been lucky today. This is going to be a winner. I have a feeling. Let's see what happens. Film the whole time so so, so people don't think that I'm like cheating, okay? Uh and 19, it's 500. No, we don't we don't have it. We didn't win anything. <laughs> but you know, what? I feel like it's lucky just cuz it was funny. <laughs> So here we go. The halls of this spooky abandoned, no, it's not abandoned, I'm just kidding. The halls of this spooky ancient hotel from like the 1800s. Smells kind of like a blockbuster in here. Oh, that was funny, from, well from back there, because you, oh, okay. You're walking up on me. Ah! So just so everybody can kind of get an idea of what this place looks like, because it's, it's pretty cool. Um, 1883, this place has been just like this, this big, huge hotel. <laughs> and that's the lake out there. Come on, land. So I had set up bed with a tan out this morning. We're out. This is my mom right here. Check her out. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got Florida men up in here hanging out under the these bridge. Are That's awesome. Florida. I'm giving him an easy nine feet. Easy. Oh, he's gonna eat the you measure from inside, from the part of the nostril closest to his eyeballs. Alligators only eat once a week. That's why I even told that other boat, yeah. I don't want they had a smaller boat, they could maneuver. Don't go back there. That's her home. City do you want it to go to? The answer was always Gnome to Boston. Village. And that is where Boston got its Boston fern. It is actually the Florida sword fern. Behold the goblin mark. All right, what's up? Going in. Yeah, it's tough to get in. There was like a, a line of people a mile long. Just a little bit of water, please. Go in, sir. Yeah. He's going to let us out. Oh, this is crazy. It's that's, crazy. that's funny. There's a, there's a bench in the bathroom. I thought you were facing Whoa, man. These look way too expensive for goblins to afford. <laughs> so, what are we? What are we waiting for? Ghost. How do you say that in Spanish? Just talking about, just reading about the guy that gave this land to now when there is an emf field being detected uh at a ghost a poltergeist or some sort of specter it'll light up red like it's doing on Ooh. harry there
Okay. Well, let's, let's, let's walk in there. Come what on. if he's really seeing a ghost? Because that's yeah, I'm, I'm serious to hold stuff. This thing. I mean, we are on a ghost tour, so. All, all up the shadows. Oh, turn the oh what was that? Off. What's that about? Turn the, turn the light off. It it's, it's a shadow. It's a plant. Now, folks, uh, just here below our feet, actually, um, here in the lakeside in, in 1927, still the Prohibition era, um, was where the speakeasy in Mount Dora was. Uh, Prohibition was illegal. Not all of the alcohol was smuggled out of Mount Dora. Some of it was actually kept here. Uh, in Mount Dora for the locals and the visitors to enjoy. And they actually did that here at the Lakeside Inn at the Kumquat Lounge. Kumquat's another one of the citrus fruits that was profitable here and uh, grown. Let's step back out here because I want to show you something here. The lobby here was a lot different during the 1920s. Uh, it's been renovated, changed a lot ever since then. But a speakeasy, hidden illegal bar that you would usually have to have a password or a code to get access to, and then they'd usually let you through a hidden passageway or trap door, sometimes very elaborate. You know, you've seen in the movies the, the little hidden casino speakeasies and the, you know, bookcase turns and all that kind of crazy. There's really elaborate ways to hide these uh, illegal bars. And the way that it was done here, the front desk was basically kind of like in the middle. Move it up. You'd go to them, you'd give them the password of the code, they'd let you behind the front desk, and then they'd lift a rug, and underneath the rug was a trap door that would let stairs down, <laughs> that would let stairs down to the Kumquat Lounge, and there you could wet your whistle. Now, after Prohibition ended, they filled the trap door in. Where it used to be, though, you can still clearly see where it used to be, and it's underneath that rug right there. Now. In 1927, one of the bartenders here was a man, in the Kumquat Lounge was a man named William Burnett, B-U-R-R-N-E-T-T. -T. He was working downstairs, just below our feet here, in his capacity as bartender for the Kumquat Lounge. When two men gained access, they had the password or the code, they were let down the trap door, they approached the bar, ordered a couple drinks, and then attempted to tell William Burnett that they had been sent by their bosses from Chicago who were affiliated with the mobs up there and they were here to move in on the bootlegging operations running out of the Central Florida area here. Now William Burnett apparently told these men to hit the road. They, he said they weren't going to get any deal here in Mount Dora from his bosses or anybody and they should just go back home where they came from. At which point these two men just simply decided to rob the Kumquat Lounge. And in the struggle that ensued with William Burnett, he was shot in the face and died three minutes later lying on the floor just below our feet here in a pool of his own blood on February 3rd, 1927. And that's the name and the date that you would find on his tombstone, which is in the local Pine Forest Cemetery, just three quarters of a mile up Donnelly Street. It's open 24 seven, all day, every day. They are waiting for you to visit them. You could go there tonight if you dared. Uh, Lakeside Inn staff, the front desk staff here, have reported the same sort of weird occurrence of soft music coming from the basement of the hotel and even smelling like a, like a sweet smelling tobacco. Now, one particular uh, night audit staff, graveyard staff member says she heard the music one night, she smelled the tobacco. It was about 3.30, 3.40 a.m. in the morning. And she decided to go investigate. So she walked to the head of the stairwell, just here in the corridor there. And as soon as she got there, she says she saw a man. She says a man, not a misty dude, not a glowy guy, um, not a vapor, but a guy walking down the stairs with dark pants on. He had a white shirt. He was wearing suspenders. He was slowly walking down the stairs. And as he reached the bottom, she called out to him and said, sir, can I help you? At which point, as he reached the last step, he slowly turned around to look back up at her. And she says it was at this point she noticed a giant gaping, just ghastly hole in the side of his face, the right side of his face, which included his eye, part of his jaw. Yeah. Very good. Now come, 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 come close. Now if you look, you can see. Oh, here and follow this rectangle all the way to there. 
Now imagine like your attic almost, right? Drops Did downstairs. Yeah. There was a false top here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, metal in this lower haunted room. It is. It is weird that those things pick up something on that uh, trap door. I don't think you're supposed to hold it. It's, it's either on or off. Okay. So yeah, it's it's picking up something, I guess. I mean, not really. No, no, no. You have to push it. No, no, mom. You're gonna turn it off. If you do that, it turns it off. Somebody just, what was this? There's no ghost here. Somebody went behind you and went in that door. I know, but I heard that thing open. But did it? Is it open? Ah! And what's, right there. and what's the graveyard called again? The Pine Forest Cemetery. <laughs> okay. Yes. June 14th, 1933. That's the date, and that's the name that you would find on it. That's the mayor. That's Mrs. Mayor, Chrissy Styles, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Nice town you got here. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. Wonderful. Have a great yeah. evening. If we get arrested later, we'll have to talk to her. Our new mayor, I can tell you that. <laughs> Annie and her husband moved here to try to restart their relationship. They were from like the Midwest or something. They came here to kind of like restart their relationship. And then one day, Annie's husband just disappeared. Fell off a record. There's no record of him in America after that. And he just disappeared. <laughs> he, well, no, we don't know. He didn't take anything. He left all of his off all the property he left behind he didn't leave any instructions for it eventually annie donnelly had you know she knew jp who lived right here um on this proper on this land this house wasn't here yet but he had a home that was on this land they were friendly jp donnelly decided he would pay for her attorney's fees so that she could get the rights to all of the property that her husband had abandoned and then shortly after that they were married. JP Donnelly and Annie uh, Donnelly were married. No suspicious. The house was built after they got married. Just sort of suspicious. The house was built after they were married. Or Lake Dora somewhere in the lake, you know. So there was no law, there was no sheriff, there was no constable or anything. So who knows what happened to Annie's husband? Annie died in here in 1908. She died upstairs. <laughs> J.P. Donnelly lived in the home until the 1920s. He was a Freemason. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted to donate okay. to the Masons. The city wouldn't let him because they wouldn't get any taxes out of it. Oh. So he sold it to him for the least amount he could, which was $10. Oh. It's been a Masonic temple ever mm -hmm. since the Depression era. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really not open to the public except for a few little events. Like there's a magician in there doing a little show he does sometimes. Mm -hmm. What what it, what it means? I don't. Oh, know. I see it. Don't know. Don't know. No, they can't. They won't tell you. Oh, they back can't. there. Oh my god. What the G is? The G in the middle of that symbol there. You know, these are these are mason tools. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And actually, you can tell, I think she did take some urns to a graveyard somewhere in Rochester and put them in the ground and stuff. A lot of flowers on that one. That's what I'm saying. It was recent. Oh, Brian. A lot of Scottish oh. type people or Irish okay. or something. I like to be Scottish too. Yeah. yeah. She was born in 1916. 1916? Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. And died in 2000. Oh, <gasps> I, I didn't know that was there. You didn't say I was already there. You it. 